get caught. It's just so that Barrel doesn't get to use his uh, deep rabbit head of like champion pool fiesta <laughs> picks. Yeah. Where he just picks out something randomly. And um, it was actually you that mentioned this, Alice. It's the same with the Kalista, and that's why you ban it. It's because you don't want life on set. And if he doesn't have Kalista, he can't play it nearly as well because of the fact that you'd go in and then you just kind of die with Kalista. Yep. You have a lot more possibilities. And I'm hoping, I'm fine with the center first pick here. Yeah, I think it's absolutely fine. Here we are into the draft for game number two. Gen G already taking away the Nah and the Seraphine. Seraphine, interesting ban on the blue side, but don't want to play the Seraphine do -si do with the amount of counter picks that both of these mid laners have. We have our two Zillion players here in this game, and so it does make things a little bit more difficult. As Damwon Kia, they don't care about priority picks. They care about making sure Ruler is on the most uncomfortable champ possible. That's right. And they'll get rid of these two that he absolutely demolished T1 on. I think that for Damwon Kia, you don't have to worry about what you can draft or what you can pick. You just want to limit Genji's options because Damwon Kia have such a wide pool of champions they can pull from, and they draft for a late game composition. They're not trying to draft for one player, one specific champion, one early game. They just draft a five-man squad. Now, Hecarim is left open here, for Genji, I think that's what the, the Narban and the Silas that they were looking for. But this is actually a terrible situation for Genji, because you might give up this hack. You might get the hack for him, right? That's nice. Uh, but now, Damon Ki, I can. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. I, I was going to talk about Senna. I was going to talk about Udea. Nope. Not happening. It is the Renekton Nidalee, and that is a completely different approach from Damon Kia here. Yeah, yeah, this is a big change, right? We're not seeing Khan play weak side this time around. They're going for a more aggressive style. This is what I wanted to see from Gen G, in fact, in this game, but Dom wanted to show me more depth once uh, again. This is uh, really interesting uh, with Tristana uh, being uh, hovered. Okay, that will be locked away. Center is left up. Damon Kia can go towards it, and there's a plethora of champions the barrel can play alongside it. Does it fit into their composition, though, is, I guess, the question, as Gen G are trying to answer the early pressure. I think this is going to be a fist fight, guys. I'm seeing Volibear, I'm seeing Hecarim, I'm seeing Tristana, and versus the Renekt in Italy. This is not going to be a game like last game. Like, I, I, as, as LCK casters, we love, we embrace uh, the... <laughs> 10-minute team fights where both sure. teams don't actually commit. I mean, I, I love it, Wolf. I mean, this uh, is you're entitled to your own opinion here. <laughs> we, we are a region of StarCraft, right? We were based yep. on that when it comes to esports. And when I played StarCraft when I was a kid, it was no rush 20 because I needed to get my buildings in order. And that is exactly how the LCK works, but not in this game. I love this Alistair pick, by the way, because you know that, uh, you know, if you're if you're Damwon Kia, they're probably looking for the Rel pick. You can take that away now, too, because Rel and Tristan is an extremely strong pairing because she has so much mobility. You can set up really nice crash downs into attract repels. So they can ban it away, or they can say, well, you can have the Rel. I don't care because I already have the counter pick in the Alistair. So it's such a strong pick here for Damwon Kia. And they're going to round this draft out with mid and their bottom champions, right? So they're just, again, building towards a response to what Genji is doing. I like the Volibear here because it can be flexed, can be played in the top lane, doesn't necessarily have to be a jungle into this Renekton. Well, have well to I mean, it's going to be top lane, right? Because Hecarim's already oh, locked that's right. in. Yeah, yeah, of course. And the Akali continues to get banned against Showmaker, just showing that they have been paying some attention. This guy has been practicing it once again. And another champion that feels like it has to be banned away from Damon Kia. And I don't think you can lock in the Syndra here. I, I can see Genji go for it. But I think if you lock in the Syndra, I don't know what Showmaker is going to play. Uh, but it's going to be something that has locked down and it's going to pair well with uh, Nidalee. And you're just going to get killed again and again and again. I mean, this isn't Chovy, so I'm not expecting Renex at mid, right? Like, I mean, Showmaker's <laughs> been playing a lot of Kiana in solo queue. He's got Yoni oh in his back pocket. Oh like, my god. If, there's some exciting stuff that could if, happen here if, as if, the Kai's is banned away. Kiana. Uh, that's oh, oh, I mean, that, that, would, that would be the utter dream, but oh. it is going to be Zaya locked in here first. A bit more defensive bottom lane, something that we've come to expect from Damwon Kia. I mean, it would be such a powerful early game if they ended up going for the Yone. I do like it a lot here, but it does kind of go away from Damwon Kia's style in general in terms of how they like to play the late game. So it would be a very big departure and it would be very tempo-based. We see the Zoe now coming through for BDD. So they have a lot of poke with this now. But let's see how this scales up. And I'm not a huge fan of the Rakan pick to come through last. Super squishy, so reliant on flanks, and it doesn't really synergize with the Zoe pick very well. Yeah, Starcross Love is here on, uh, as Genji locked that one away. I, I feel you as well, uh, Wolf. I think that it doesn't necessarily add quite as much. I've been underwhelmed um, by the Rakan as Malzaha being hovered at the moment. A lot of different options now for Showmaker. Uh, in the back of my mind, I can hear Vettius' voice asking for a Nocturne, but it will be the Rumble that's locked away. That could be top lane. 
as well, as we don't necessarily know where this Renekton's going, as of course Chovy showed us, it is largely a mid lane champion. Yeah. And that's actually a big problem, right? Because the Volibear is there meant as a counter to the Renekton. And it's yet again, Domon Kia just pulling a uh, the, the old mess around in draft. And this late, this last uh, or late draft pivot means that Rascal's playing a matchup he's not happy about. If BDD ever steps up, he, uh, steps up, he's just gonna immediately get demolished by the Nidalee Renekton combo because we've seen this work again and again and again. It's just so incredibly strong and oppressive. And as a whole, Gen G comps is like, I'm gonna go in. And Domokia says, I throw down an equalizer, I throw down a Fetterstorm. Hey, you're screwed. Yeah, what are you going to do? It's another one of these comps that's very difficult to fight into. One thing that I do see is a little bit of a weakness here for Damwon Kia is that topside, you know, damage is all magic. Plus, they have no CC to set up for anything for Canyon. So Canyon not going to be heading towards the topside. And Rumble pushes every lane, right? Yeah. No matter what you do, he's always going to be shoved up. So it's going to be a lot of very careful play from Khan. And I think that Canyon's going to have to take a lot of control of the jungle and make sure that Clid is revealed as often as Darwan can possibly get it. This is definitely going to be a game where, where Canyon has to show the jungle gap, right? He has to actually show his prowess. He is going to be so pivotal in getting this early lead for Damwon Kia. Now, they can scale later on into the game, but I feel like you have to have that mid-game power spike. You really need to hit that because later on in the game, the poke is there for Gen.G. They have a better scaling comp. Well, and uh, the, the main thing for me is, well, can they actually make it work? We'll get back to your point. Let's get into game number two. Here we are. Welcome to the Rift for game number two. And Chronicler, I am so sorry for interrupting no. you as uh, we did need to make sure that we are attending the Rift. We did not have the audio issues that we had last time, but I hope you held on to the point you were trying to make. Uh, th that's on me, uh, but I'm glad you guys are <laughs> listening to me after all. Uh, I just want to get Always that, listening, I just want to get that worry. out there, okay? Um, now we've had that uh, we can out of the way, we can ignore it for the rest of the series. Uh, one thing that Gen G does when they do get ahead is this comp just runs over you, right? Because the amount of hard engage available is so insanely hard to deal with. You have two chem tank users plus a Rakan. So if Gen.G do actually get an early game lead, which after last game, I'd be a, I'm a bit scared coming into the series. I was pretty hyped. Now I'm like, I don't know. But if you do get a lead, sure, Ghost is de has defensive capabilities, but Canyon, Showmaker, Khan can all blow those up in seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see how the mid-game fights are going to go around the first few Drakes, the Rift Herald, right? Because I think if you get priority as Dom Juan Kia in some of these lanes, you can really crush those objectives, and I think you need to. You need to control the tempo of the game here, because later on, sure, I mean, the Zoe is very skill-based and is very based on how much vision you have, which Clid can definitely help control in this matchup. But for Gen G, later on, you're just going to have so much more ability to, to <laughs> con convert team, team fights on your terms, right, with the poke damage that they have, whereas Dom Juan Kia is a little bit more hard engage, right? with the Rumble, with the Renekton. So their fights are very telegraphed, very easy to predict. Well, having a look at these champions, of course, Khan, he does like to have a few of his one-offs, and this is one that was successful in his Rumble, something that, you know, dates back this guy, the oldest top laner in the LCK, and certainly has been playing in many a uh, Rumble meta, as Canyon just uh, does a bit of a drive-by here in the mid lane, and this is exactly where the focus is going to be for Damon Kia. Of course, you see Renekton and Nidalee on the same team. It's very easy analysis. They will likely <laughs> play the early game together, yes. and it will be scary. As speaking of scary, Trouble Bubble lands on a Showmaker in the mid lane, but not quite enough at level two to be able to follow up with too much. And this is a really early roam coming in from life, making great use of the priority that you do have available with the Tristan early on, of course, as you push in so easily with your explosive shot. Uh, just to make sure that they know where Canyon is, right? They don't actually need to do anything with that knowledge, uh, but playing around that also means that Rascal can go for more aggressive trades, because I think that uh, if you're able to go in for a short trade, you know, get a chomp, get your shield, get a grass proc and run out again, you can be fine. But if Kenyon is ever in the vicinity and you do that, uh, you die. Yeah. I mean, it's just really easy to just follow that up, right? And so you do have to show some respect. I think this early game is where you really need to push the envelope. And we do see Rascal doing just that, trading at this very moment where you know Kenyon isn't going to be nearby. He isn't going to be a problem. Some of these trades can be dangerous, though. I feel like Harpoon lands and then the bear just burns down. He went for the Elderwood skin as well, which <laughs> is far more flammable than the yes. other skins. Not exactly the optimal choice, but Rascal a bit stuck in his ways when it comes to the skin options. 
As now Canyon trying to get position around this. Rift Scuttler and thankfully for Damwon Kia, they're able to move their bottom lane up a little bit earlier despite the lane position being a little bit better there for Gen G as Beryl explodes towards the end. Damwon Kia really trying to push them out, understanding that they had uh, Canyon there in the river. Yeah, of course you have no vision, right? So you don't know if Canyon is actually running towards you. So just to be sure, you go for the rocket jump back. Immediate pivot comes out from Gen G as they will secure the topside Scuttle. Life's still level two here. Yeah, Canyon level four has started off these Krugs, 84.2% win rate uh, currently on this Nidalee. Definitely the best one that we have here in the LCK. He's the best a lot of things, to be perfectly honest, but his <laughs> Nidalee is certainly exceptional. You know, we talk about the draft and we talk about champion pools for Dom One Kia and how they often draft very reactionally, but they have, a, they have deeper pockets than they often show. And this is one of, I believe, six champions that Khan has played one off this season. Um, and hold that oh. thought. Yeah, he might be dying as well as uh, Rascal comes on in, teleport immediately down as the turret not going to do enough work. Rascal, happy to tank that one up as it is going to be Showmaker being able to teleport through and clear up the minions, but it's not quite enough. Khan does have his TP, so he can head back towards that top lane immediately, but still good start for Genji. And now, uh, Showmaker, or BDD rather, can deny so many minions to Showmaker uh, because he can freeze the wave here if he chooses to. A lot of the wave was killed off earlier there, and you don't get anything out of the teleport. And yeah, no. getting this early snowball on a Hecarim is devastating. And it can be very, very tough to, to recover from. As you see, Khan gets picked here, and you know, I was talking about champion pools, right? It's another one-off champion he's had, but Damwon Kia, again, already in the series have shown us two different play styles, right? The scaling comp, and this one's a little bit more aggressive early, but the fall behind early on this rumble is a big issue now. So Cannon is trying yeah. to go super deep. I mean, you can see how uh, frustrating this lane can go, and even this is even after he's picked. This is the de the depressing thing as well uh, on the Damon Kia side because it only gets worse, right? Rascal still has his flash, Khan without it. So if there's a return gank, that's when the real danger starts to hit. And coming back in a rumble lane has always historically been very, very difficult. As Khan, you can see half health by a combo out of Rascal. Certainly pulling some control back here for Gen.G topside. Yeah, Rumble's kind of weird in that way because uh, his flame, you know, it doesn't work when you're retreating, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, you can't actually trade aggressively while kiting backwards because you lose your damage. So you're always trading down while behind. So that could be a, a huge issue in terms of recovering here in this top side of the map. And with the draft that Damon Kia has gone for, the mid-game spikes are still very impressive. They can still win skirmishes, they can still blow up people in a matter of seconds. But if this happens two, three more times, then all of a sudden those margins become so much smaller and uh, the possibility for you to go for plays is a lot harder. Clint was spotted there. Yeah, Canyon's going to find the Spear on a BDD though, but they know that Clid is in the area, as you say. Bubble going to connect, Showmaker is going to survive for the moment. Canyon, the more squishy target, will take the Paddle Star as BDD actually playing this one out very, very nicely. It is certainly a tightrope that uh, Genji are walking in that mid lane. It certainly is. I feel like BDD is once again going to be tested here in the mid lane. We saw him get a little bit out of position, a little bit caught last game. This time if he can tighten it up and hit those trouble bubbles and actually be an extremely accurate Zoe like we know he can be, so oh, yeah. famous for this champion, then it's a, it's a really big way for Genji to turn this series around, especially the later game goes on. That's when he is really going to have to be Johnny on the spot. And if he is, I, I could see light at the end of the tunnel here. Well, there's a head by Pulp. It's going to be answered by the grand entrance as uh, Barrel continuing to go forward, finds himself the trample stun as Rule is diving on top of Ghost. Down to 200 health here as he gets the Blade Caller but finds no damage with it. And now Clid can go for a potential dive as it's only level 5 for the Zyre. And this is so good for Gen.G if they can snowball his bot lane as well. Level yep. 6. In goes Clid, finds the Ghost as there's the ultimate Ghost though is going to try and kite this one out. Is burning down though, and he's definitely going to die. Beryl now relegated back underneath his turret. And Rule is just going to jump on top of him. Finds a bit of a reset there as Beryl's surviving for a very long time. And it looks like Gen.G are going to run out of minions. So just the one pick, but now they're two and zero. Really nice timing here for this. You know, you see the aggressive trade come through for Ruler because he knows that Clit is coming down. He knows that Clit has six. He's an extremely good champion. Hecarim is at diving turrets. So great timing. Oh, and uh oh, that's a huge flash forward. And Ruler just pops him. Good night, Mr. Cow. Okay. Well, um, hopefully this time it will be enough because last game we saw Ruler make a big play, not get a follow up. Now getting fed on Tristana, a pick that snowballs so incredibly well is amazing. The punish does come through because while that is happening, Canyon clears topside jungle, goes for the Rift Herald here. Uh, but I was going to say, you know, getting a kill on life, not great. Getting a kill on Ruler, amazing. Oh, yeah. This is definitely the dream. 1 0 1 now for the Tristana. 
as they're trying to set up for some of these mid-game fights that Damwon Kia will have a lot of power in. Now, it is going to be the Herald secured, so Damwon Kia will be able to get that gold lead to about even after that comes down, but where are they going to be putting the money, right? Beryl, you can see, is rotated towards the mid lane, and Showmaker hasn't really been able to get too much done. Of course, finds the stun now, as BDD is going to get traded on. Speaking of trades, though, the Equalizer comes down for Khan. He's going to force Rascal to walk this red carpet. It is not a great position. He's buying time as Canyon moves on in. Steals away a cannon creep. <laughs> Rascal's going to walk away. That's not what you want. But yeah, the, the question about the Rift Herald is a tough one, right? Because, I mean, ideally, I think you'd want the money to go to Ghost. When you think about the scaling and where the money needs to go, he's already struggling in lane, though. It's going to be very difficult to actually get a, a bot Rift Herald off. You're never going to have the priority to do that. Now it looks like they're going to lose control of this Drake, too. And this, this is probably going to be one of those Rift Heralds you just put down towards the end of its life cycle and you don't get a lot of value. And this is a true LCK game, because even if the inevitable Cloud Soul comes through, you're very happy about it as Gen G, because you have Holy Bear and Hecarim, right? Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, that's fine. We don't, we, we don't mind it nearly as much. And I'm really impressed, because like you guys, I was worried about the mental state of Gen G. Like, historically, we've seen this team kind of crumble, and thus far, the early game is looking mint. It really is. Well, Rascal might have overstepped just a little bit, but no, we're not going to quite get the rotation in on time for Darmon Kier, as Khan did actually a fair bit of damage there as he was looking to burn down the volley bear. Currently a 10 CS gap as we have a look at this one more time. As yeah, Genji really timing. taking control. Really nice stuff, Botside. Yeah, I mean, you, you have level 6 here. It's super easy to connect. I mean, Hecarim is one of the best dive champions you can ever have when Damwon Kia's bot lane, their bot duo, is this low. So it ends up being very well played from them. And I, I have serious concerns about how this is going to go in the future as well, because Ruler's already starting to get fed. You see he actually <laughs> follows through, flashes, gets the Alistair, and... I like, think he actually also, like, uh, cancelled out the headbutt yeah, yeah. by uh, just rocket jumping and eating it and then doing damage with it at the same time. That was actually just uh, ridiculously sick as there's the stun down onto BDD. Nowhere for him to go. And we knew that this was the possibility. Finally, Damwon Kia do it. Cool little equalizer there on the edge from Khan. Does it end up... He's able to make it happen. This is one of the problems of Zoe, right? Very predictable with the teleport jumps. And this is actually going to be the Rift Herald that was going to be so hard to find, so hard to get value out of. They will get it with this pick. Yep, they're going to throw it into the mid lane. Showmaker and Canyon. Uh, going to have to tank up some uh, turret shots there, but they'll be absolutely fine. And this one last one, or second last one, is uh, going to be very, very close to being taken down as well, especially with BDD. No teleport available. Not going to be able to get here. Is Khan going to get stunned up yet again? But the safety of his turret is right there, and he should be okay. Canyon coming up. Yeah, not with a whole lot. But if he just lands the spear without a stun, then that's going to help out. Rascal down to about half. But Khan not able to find his way in. Avoids the last spear. Khan finally <laughs> trying to deal with a lot of this overheating issue that he's been having. That, that, that's, a, that's a very, very self-confident bear. Oh, yes. Yeah, the thing is... Clid was rotating up, but he was spotted by a bunch of wards, so it was very confident <laughs> from Gen G there, but they knew that they were going to be totally fine. When I say they, Rascal knew he was going to be fine. I really like to see that aggression. And here's one of the problems with this, right? Um, the top lane, Rumble, doesn't actually provide anything for the middle lane. You don't have lockdown. Yep. Rascal has gone for the Mercury threats combined with another cloak, and it's just so hard to get through that health bar, and that's why Rascal can move up with such impunity, even though help is decently far away. Yeah. Uh, See what he's going to be able to purchase here as the bubble is going to go wide. Showmaker, that might actually keep him alive here unless Clid can get the work done. Good stun to stop him from getting behind his canyon's going to move on in. Not a lot of mana. Damon Kier are going to back away as now Khan getting back underneath his turret once more, but Rascal's got a shield. He'll be absolutely fine. Things evening out there on the top side. Speaking of even, very even in all of our lanes actually and the jungle for both of these teams. It's just that kill gold that's helping Genji out and the plate gold helping out Damwon Kia when it comes to getting this game to be so even. I'm gonna watch this one more time here. BDD, you know, overextending just a little bit. He does not expect Canyon to be there. They don't have vision. And also Khan's perfectly placed <laughs> ultimate there just makes it so there's no way out. The equalizer prevents him from walking left. He's got the portal jump, he's stuck. That was a really nicely timed gank. It gets them the Rift Herald gold, which makes us even in terms of the gold right now. But I feel like Damwon Kia need more of an edge than this with this composition. They're also down a Drake right now. Uh, because Damwon Kia is running into the same issue that you had with the Gen G comp, which is the range advantage, which is weird to say considering you have the Rumble, right? But um, outside of the Nidalee, you don't really have that much going on in terms of effective range. Rumble needs to be in top of the peop uh, of those opponents. Showmaker needs to be. And then you have Ghost who kind of just wants to kite back, but the rest of his team wants to play aggressive, go in. Whereas the Gen G team comp, it's pretty straightforward. Hit a bubble and dive in deep. Yeah. It, has, it has great dive, it has great 
chip damage poke? I mean, you can set up poke to start the fight with the Zoe and then dive in. Like, it, it, it kind of is multifaceted in that regard. We have one minute until this Drake spawns here. I think very gets generous control. today, by the way. Yeah. Uh, another Cloud Soul <laughs> is avoided. Double. I've been meditating on this just to make sure that we don't get too many clouds in the final. Um, I wanted at least the first two games. So, you know, the jury's out on whether it's going to work for the third one. But, uh, just wanted to let you guys know that I was trying very, very uh, We hard. appreciate it. I, yeah, I, I think I, I speak for everyone and say it's, it's really nice of you, Atlas. <laughs> Maybe uh, Gen G, not so much. Maybe they'd be they'd be okay with the uh, cloud, but... <laughs> That's true. They got the Hecker in this time around as Beryl. Moving in uh, slightly aggressively here towards the bottom side as uh, things are very, very even outside of the couple of kills. Thankfully for Ghost, he's been able to continue farming with uh, pretty much impunity as Rascal once again going in being annoying towards Khan and uh, he's just straight up winning these trades now. Yeah, and if you were forced to use teleport here as Khan, it's a disaster. You know, he, he's probably going to have to back and then teleport into the Drake fight. I think this is Don Monkey's one chance to really grab this game back into their hands and control it as this, this Drake fight here, turn it around. If you let this one go, I think you just slip too far behind. And he's walking back to top. He hasn't used a teleport. They need to fight for this. Well, Beryl's going to come on down. Rocket jump out there from Ruler. That's now on cooldown as Spear is soaked by Clid. And I think as Gen G, you give this one up because this is at a point where can you showmaker are actually at the scariest, right? Like, this is still when this composition spikes incredibly hard. And as Gen G, unlike last game, you're in a fairly comfortable position here when it comes to the late game. Well, Khan's uh, fighting Rascal in between his inner and outer turret. If you can you call can that fighting. That, <laughs> yeah, the Volley Bear is uh, having a very, very good time. So maybe I was wrong when it came to the Elderwood skin. Maybe he's like one of those mountain ashes that only gets more powerful after he's been lit on fire. Maybe they're fireproof. Or what if it's like one of those woods that has been burned again and again, so it's like it's so charred that you can't actually get through yeah, it anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. I'm not entirely sure. There's got to be a blacksmith reference here. <laughs> but uh, I just don't know enough about it, so I'm just not going to try. Is Showmaker going to push in once again? And we'll see where the dumb one here can grab themselves this turret. Looks like they might be able to, as the cannon minion is at least dealt with. But nope. Showmaker just clears that one up. So now a lot of map control now in favor of Damwon Kia and Wolf. That was your turret, that was your Zoe yeah, turret. Yeah, as the Zoe turret goes down, so that's gonna really eliminate a lot of BDD's ability to actually hit, take pot shots, right? Set up sleeps, be involved around some of these skirmishes. Now, it is an Infernal Drake that we're gonna have here, an Infernal Ooh. Soul coming up, which is actually pretty massive, right? Especially for Genji's comp. And it's gonna really help Zoe out in a lot of these team fights coming up. The fact that they got the first Drake and gave them an extra buffer allows them to skip the Drake, as Connor was saying, you know, you don't wanna take that fight necessarily. And this ends up being pretty nice for Gen G, all things considered, even with the Drake, the second Drake going the way of Damwon Kia. I think if Damwon Kia can stack these though, then this is their get out of jail free card, right? Like if Damwon Kia can set up for fights around Drake and it's a rumble, right? We've been talking about rumble and dragons for eight years or nine years or however <laughs> long rumble has been out, right? Because Equalizer is just so good at fighting around these clear positions. That could be a way for Damwon Kia to augment their composition for the late game. The Infernal map is actually Really bad for Dumbon Kia though, because there's less enclosed corridors, right? So equalizer Ooh, gets true. less yeah. value, uh, you get less value because Ghost loves fighting in small enclosed spaces. That's true. Whereas as Gen G, I guess the lack of walls is a bit unfortunate for you, Zoe, but outside of that, you like open spaces, you like having the ability to run in. And I'm I'm glad to see Dumbon Kia really try and get more and more leads here because while I think that they're good enough to actually make it work later in the game and especially if they do stack an Infernal or two if they ever hit any CC someone just dies um, it's not nearly as secure as we'd like it to be <laughs> oh wow goodbye uh, turret that was just wrecked that's that's, that's great good dunk yes I, I'm um, concerned too you know you guys about what Dom Juan Kia's late game team fighting is going to look like you know once we do hit like the 30 minute marker I'm not talking the late game not like the okay Baron spawn we're skirmishing around some of these objectives of late game because your team fighting is so telegraphed you miss the spear you miss the equalizer like what do you do in that fight I mean you have a great front line arguably but can Ghost really get in position it's the range problem that you guys have talked about so much there were conflicts you're going to have to deal with these are going to be such easy ways for Gen.G to take fights on their terms in these later, later game objectives. And I'm a little bit concerned about how Dom Wan Kia is going to start off these fights because to set up the CC with Showmaker is so difficult. Barrel and in here, we're going to have to work together, but there's so many ways to disengage as Gen.G. Very concerned about how this, this comp is going to work later on in terms of the front to back. I actually, I, I agree with you 100%. I think that Dom Wan Kia they need to try and find something now, right? This is a mid-game composition. We've hit the mid-game. Yeah. And, this uh, is their moment. 
Let's see whether they can actually set up around objectives. Because the other thing is, is like they're engaged, not fantastic, right? You mentioned like try and land a spear, try and get in. You know, Beryl can flash forward, get a headbutt pole, and then they can follow up, things like that. But I think a lot of this does need them to be around an area and utilize that equalizer effectively to break up and create the chaos necessary. Yeah, any hesitation can really cost you big. And it's something that Gen G, they don't necessarily have to go aggro, right? Which is a big difference with Dumb Monkey and a big difference. Because last game, it was Gen G who kind of, they had the task of engaging. Sure, their engagement was great with the Orn, yep. um, which we saw. But we also saw what happens if you pull the trigger and it doesn't work out. They were basically immediately screwed because they were going to get poked out, out healed, and could never go for an objective. With this composition, however, uh, BDD is going to have just as much pressure. You have a very beefy frontline, and the amount of sheer hard engage that you have is just so insane. And even if you miss one of your buttons, it's two or three more. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of buttons <laughs> on this side and when it comes to getting in there. There's only one tanky member, and that's Barrel. And sure, Ghost has Fatter Storm, but outside of that, the defensive capabilities besides try and kill you are not that great. And try and kill you only works up until a certain point in the game. I mean, you could tell by the builds they're going for, too, that they're looking for execution, Oof. right? Like, two... <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going... Uh, full into the AP damage on the top side of the map. Um, name escaping me on this item right now. Night Harvester. Night Harvester, Night Harvester thank you. The, it's going to actually be very aggressive, plus the fact that they've gone for Gale Force, okay, and Stride Breaker. Like, you're looking to execute somebody if you can, but it's just easier said than done. And Ooh. in these moments, you're just going to get out chipped. Like, the poke damage is real for Gen G. If some of these bubbles start to land as well, it gets very, very scary as Canyon pounces out of the way exactly when he needs to. This was the Dom one play from game number one as the Herald is shoved in. But in goes Barrel. Rascal going to answer very nicely. And Equalizer goes down slightly ahead of when Dom one Kia needed it. And now you can't fight very easily as Dom one Kia. You know that you've used all your tools. Yeah, now we're looking for the bubbles. Grand entrance from life. He might explode, but can they actually win the fight? Ruler grabs one as Clid's running out of this one. He should be able to get out relatively safely as the bubble not going to hit the mark. And there it is, the double kill for Ruler. And he's now three and zero, and this has become very scary. That's an MVP red buff right there. Ruler finds the execution, a beautiful flank, and it looks like life is throwing his life away, but he's doing so justifiably. That's the Infernal Drake, and that might be the break that Genji needed to really put the pressure to this mid-game composition of Damwon Kia. You can see the range damage is so much for Genji that when the engage comes through for Damwon Kia, they drop down the equalizer. At that moment, you could see them walking away. You know that it's not going to be a fight they can win. And sure, the counter uh, engage there was really nice. Showmaker got a lot of value. Uh, Ruler, by the way, hits 1,500 kills. Yeah, very nicely done. As BDD is going to have to get out of there, has to use his flash. Rocket jump from Ruler as Damwon Kia. They ain't done just yet. As Canyon gets over the wall, doesn't find the spear, though. And now life getting on further forward. We're teleporting in Equalizer. Really good at corralling Gen G right now. But I think they've made it. I think they've made it out as in goes Canyon one more time. He's going to get lit on fire by life as now. Oh, Canyon's in trouble. He has to go golden. Featherstorm's there for Ghost as well. And now Rascal, he has to run away. Can the rest of Gen G get here in time? As the blade call is good from Ghost. Rascal's still so, so tanky as Canyon gets over the wall once again. But now who's getting corralled? Showmaker tries to say that it's not him, but he'll burn down once again as BDD picks that one up. And Dumb One here, I think this comp may have run its course as Genji are rolling over them here in game two. Now this draft has just so many holes in it. There are so many issues in terms of consistent damage and range that they overextend here. They go deep for the chase. They get punished. Canyon, yep. gonna be the last to fall. It's gonna be a full wipe, it feels. Yeah, Bear versus Cat. I know where my money's at, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> and that is going to be Canyon <laughs> slinking away. Genji looking really, really good. Nine to two now in the kills, despite the fact that it's only a 2k gold lead. Right. Plus, uh, if Canyon actually has his dumb one Kia world skin, I think this goes completely differently. Oh, Just want to throw that out yeah. there, right? But the team fighting execution from Genji has been so good here. And look at this. Once the equalizer is gone, you can see dumb one Kia are really struggling to actually make anything happen. They're just looking for spears. The sleep comes through and it's go time. You go in, you have a perfect engage. Look at Clid from the flank. And now Showmaker tries to turn it around, but like it's too late. It's too little too late. You're going to get burned down. There's too much range damage. And this problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more infernal stacks start to come through on these drakes yeah, this is the next fight is uh this was just an over chase from Dumb Monkey. you can see the desperation they know that their comp is good right now and it's gonna get worse and this is what makes Dumb on kia so good normally is they recognize what they need to do and execute it perfectly but Gen G in this situation is actually able to stay alive for so much longer than Dumb Monkey already expect if rascal has his ultimate here already this fight isn't even close but he's trying to as much time 
And Genji plays this so beautifully, because if you overextend on this as Rascal, you just get blown up and you lose the fight and you just give up a free kill. Instead, they play it very slow, back and forth. And now, I think this, the composition from Damakia is huge trouble. It really is. I mean, you can see this just becomes a meat grinder. Like, Rascal just locked the door. Um, yeah. And there's no way out. And but this is just an issue that compounds about stuff. You talk about how they know their this comp is strongest at this point, but I feel like the snow is melted. The, you know, you're rolling the snowball down the <laughs> hill, but it's not picking up any more steam, right? Like, it's not going to work anymore. And you need a miracle engage now for Don Key. You need a miracle pick. Well, you can see Rascal continuing to be frustrating for Khan as well as Damwon Kia trying to hold on to their mid lane as well. In comes Showmaker though, as Rascal may have overextended. And it looks like he's just going for it, looking for this solo kill. There's the equalizer, and Rascal slowed down. Khan, one auto, Rascal's gonna do it! And that's gonna make it the one for one, and the Baron is already going down. And you know they don't have teleport. Showmaker can't get over here, he has to walk the long way. And there is no equalizer available. That's one of the key ultimates that you need in this situation to contest this Baron. Oh, Bubble is gonna connect onto Canyon there as well. Barrel had already gone in, it's exactly not what you want. It's a great buster shot from Ruler as well to try and keep himself alive. He rocket jumps at exactly the right moment to keep himself alive. And now Clid is rolling over the top of it. He'll go down as Showmaker grabs that one. Now BDD could be in trouble. That's a great Zonya's there. And that's going to be it. The triple kill for the Crocodile. And Ruler says, I'll take mine as well. And now Tristana versus the Nidalee. I think I know where my money's at as Ruler gets some vision. And we'll see where the Canyon can find the Spear. The answer is going to be no for now as Ruler. Oh no, the flash forward, but it's answered by Ruler. He's going to find the autos and that's the outplay. I feel like we're scraping the butter across the toast here for Don Juan Kia, <laughs> right? Like everything that their comp is capable of doing, they're almost there, right? They're almost able to make this work. But the longer the longer the team fights go, the range damage really starts to stack up and you just don't have the tools to keep it up. We're in a country with such amazing cuisine. You go for butter toast? <laughs> is the, uh, you need what? Everyone can analogy, understand. Okay. <laughs> you can, everyone understands buttering the toast, okay? All right, they're I running out of kimchi, man, and there's no one to give them more panjans, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I can't believe that you did that on the fly as well. That's the perfect <laughs> analogy if you want to take the Korean route. So I hope that our Korean viewers appreciate it. Is now Damwon Kia looking to try and get themselves back into position, but Canyon's still dead for another second. They are going to be able to at least secure their blue buff by the looks of things as we've got one second on soul point for Gen G. Barrel, man, he's getting chunked already as in goes cleared, goes out. And he's going to keep himself alive for the moment. Showmaker trying to tank things up as there's another bubble to connect from BDD. Damon Kia together as five once again, but they've suffered some losses when it comes to the health bar. Showmaker knows that they can't give this one up as he tries to get himself back out. The cow is already dead though, as Ghost going forward finds Clint now, and that's going to be Canyon locking down the dragon. Canyon still trying to go aggressive here as Zaya already dead. The spears are going to miss. Genji, they miss out on the Drake, but they find the team fight once again. It feels like Damwon Kia bringing a knife to a gunfight here, Atlas. They just don't have the range. They desperately get the steal. They rush in, but as you mentioned, their health bars are so low by the time they close the distance. And in this case, the trade-off is not worth it, right? Because Genji keeps getting more and more and more fed. Sure, you don't give them an, a, a Drake. That's nice, you know. The percentage <laughs> AP and AD is somewhat relevant. But Ruler 7 0 and 6. This is a fetish yeah. for uh, Tristana. And you can see how well he positions around these fights as well. Yeah, this is uh, this is the classic Ruler bot gap situation, right? This is what we knew Genji was going to be capable of. How he survived in this fight is ludicrous, by the way. Unbelievable. Like, absolutely insane. <laughs> He's so insanely and low. He, he can. <laughs> He jumps in on an Alistair, gets knocked back into the enemy team, and the rest of his team is still there to support him, right? And this is, again, with a normal composition, Dumbo Kia doesn't do this. They don't try to force this, but they have to. They, they have don't to. have an option. You need to go all in with this composition, because late game, it's just not going to happen. No. Oh, this is so sad. Poor kitty. Yeah. <laughs> I think I explained that as a ruler outplay, but I think uh, Canyon may have outplayed himself yeah. uh, in that one. And look at the, the like, Genji's comp has everything, right? They have the hard engage, but they have the poke to back it up. And by the time that Dom and Kia can actually look for this fight, in live, by the way, yeah, Barrel. They've got uh, Barrel taking a lot of damage here. Unbreakable Will is decent. He finds a three-man pulverize, but uh, what's it all for, ladies and gentlemen? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, we, we won't know until we see the replay exactly what happened there. Probably just trying to clear out vision. I mean, the objective is so far away, a weird place to get caught here. 
if you're the Alistair. And this opens up opportunities here for the Baron now for Genji. They could just try to sweep this vision, and Damwon Kia do not have the tools to contest. Yeah, Rascal actually just takes no damage from this top side of the map. His rule will pop. The rumble, my god, the damage is ludicrous. He's got his Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire Cannon, as well as his Kraken Slayer, and there's no one that can soak this damage. It's, it's what we said, once Gen G gets ahead, they have so much engage, they can just run at you so fast, there's nothing you can do. Yeah, this is a roll over the top by the looks of things, as the Baron taken down to about half health. The fight is on, but the bubble is good from BDD. Ghost trying to get some autos, the stun comes down onto Rascal. He's actually kiting this pretty well. But Gen G, I mean, they're just happy to throw Rascal and Clint into the front line, and they can just do what they want. I mean, the clock is on their side. The clock is 100% on Gen G's side. So, yeah, if you start a Baron here, and Damwon Ki have to use all their resources to deny it, they lose Khan. And then they still, yeah, sure, you stop the Baron, but that's just burning down the clock, which favors Gen G because they're very excited to take this next Drake. They're ready, they're ready to take the next fight. This is how Barrel gets caught by himself, looking like he's just clearing vision all alone. Um, yeah, just no one there to, to back him up, and even. If there were people to back him up, I don't think they would save him because nope. this nope. is not a position you should be in. And normally I'd look at what does Domwon Kia do because they're so good at finding these openings. However, with this squishy composition, you see the problem. I think even if Ruler gets blown up, which uh, provided how the game has been going so far and the fact that he has a stopwatch is seemingly Difficult. unlikely. Even if he gets down or goes down rather, this is not a composition from Janji that will lack damage. Hecarim has an insane amount of damage still. Volibear has been doing a lot. BDD has been playing really well. And there is no tanks on Dumb Monkey. That's not a sign that's not gonna like, that's gonna tank everything that you want. Uh, the moment that ruler goes down. And look at the items too, like with all the AP damage you talked about in the draft atlas, it's super easy to itemize against the damage yeah. of Dom Wan Kia. It's super easy to, to counter that. You could see the spirit visages coming through, force of nature. How do you actually kill these tanks? Well, I mean, Canyon and Khan are so much of what their recipe for success was. And there's a 0-6 rumble on the side of Dom Wan Kia. And look, I, uh, I've cast many a rumble in my time. This is often how it goes, right? He's a beast <laughs> or famine champion. I had the joy of casting Marin when he was over in uh, in the LPL. And this is exactly what had happened. It's either 6-0 oh or 0-6, right? There is no in-between when it comes to the Rumble. So I'm not going to, you know, say that Khan is terrible, blah, blah, blah. That is not true. That You have to play forward. You have to play aggressively to make this work. And it straight up has not. It's the Jace problem, right? If you're not getting pressure in the lane, you're not doing anything. The problem was that Clit played around that so well in the early game, and I think Rascal on this Volibear has been so good! Oh, in goes Clit. He does get pulverized, though. Now back underneath the turret as Canyon will get on top of him. Beryl's the one that locks down the kill as BDD finds some bubbles. But goodbye, Clit. An overextension 15 here. 15 seconds before the Drake. 15 seconds to go. This is a disaster. Genji, I think they might actually still have options when it comes to fighting Dom on Kia because they are so strong right now. But Beryl, he's going to go in. Look at Ruler. Still at full health right now. Beryl's going to get popped. As in goes Rascal Showmaker. Trying to be the hero. Ruler, though, is going to flash his way out. Goes golden at the end, but he's so extraordinarily low. And Ghost will get that 1,000 golden now. Dom on Kia. Look at the Baron. This is the Dom on Kia we're talking about. You're behind. You're caught isn't strong in the late oh, game, but you make the no. plays to Rascal. turn the game around. And now Rascal's going to get picked off as well. This is 100% a Baron going over to Damwon Kia. Is this enough of a throw, though? I don't know if this in itself is enough, but I'm looking at the mental of the Genji players. This is crippling, right? If you lose this game... You lose this game, you lose the series, it's basically. Oh, it's over, yeah. it's, it's over. You can't lose this. Just the Baron is not going to be enough, though, because Damwon Kia still has the same issue. The wave clear is good for Genji, but you need to shore this up. Just... Try Look to forget this. about this immediately, but this cannot happen. Again. Overextending oh. your, you know, into an Alistair, right? Because Alistair has the ability to just instantly ult, turn around, bump you back into the turret. So it's a huge overextension that's going to cost you big. And Don Wakita did not settle for one. They forced the issue here. Yep, and Beryl's just reminding everyone that this is his Alistair, right? Look back to 2019. He was 100% just the best Alistair that we had. He demonstrated that at Worlds, and he's showing us it here now. He's got caught out a few times, but we know what his capabilities are as Rascal chased down in the end as well. And Damwon Kier, they're going to need more miracles than just this. It's also Showmake actually getting on top of Ruler, because if Ruler doesn't die there immediately and doesn't get stunned by the Renekton on top of an Equalizer, that fight might still be won, even though it was a 4v5. Instead, he clears so much distance, finds the blow up, and now Genji, they're still fine, okay? They can still they can still make this work. I'm more worried about like what this does to you as a team, because sure. you need to still be 
confident to start to continuously engage, right? And now, a single lost fight around the Drake can suddenly mean a mountain sword for this Damwon Kia The team. variance of this game has gone up super high. Like, the chances of Damwon Kia winning this game have gone up astronomically after this because the, the two objectives they got for free are the two hardest you can get with their comp, right? Like, it's so difficult to win those fights, but if you throw, you overextend as Gen.G and you give these objectives for free, Damwon Kia gets objectives Whoa. they're not supposed to have in this game, right? And this is a huge problem. Now you have two Void Staffs online. Yeah, now Canyon is two levels ahead of Clid as well. So you can see, like, Canyon's somehow sitting on a 9 KDA in a game that, like, Damwon Kia was losing from a very, very early stage. Not necessarily sure how he did it, but I guess he's just been staying away from the problems that Damwon Kia have been having and just slowly but surely farming up. He's a legit damage threat right now with his Void Staff online, moving towards what looks to be his uh, Rabbidon's Death Cap as item number four after the Zonyas were already complete. So maybe he'll be able to find something. And of course, like, I look at Nidalee like I look at Blitzcrank, you know? <laughs> you land that one spear onto the carry and execute them, it changes the flow of a game a lot. Yeah. The amount of times it happens, very slim. The amount of times Canyon's done it, a lot. Larger than a lot of other players. And this is the variance I'm talking about. You get one pick, you make one mistake as Genji, you could lose this game now, because now we're 35 minutes into the game, right? And they actually have two Infernal Drake so This is a game that you should have won no matter what. I mean, you had it locked I mean, down. I think it's still Genji favored at yeah, this it stage, is. right? It still has to be. But now there's chances for Dom Wan Kia. Now they can actually win some of these fights, potentially. If you get one pick, you could win the whole game. You could go up 2-0. And the important thing for Genji here is twofold. Don't get baited into an equalizer like that and just keep Ruler safe. Sure, you can dive with Rascal and Clade, but you need to make sure that uh. Ruler can actually do damage because otherwise, if he ever gets a Renekton on top of him, it's just immediately over. Speaking of the Renekton, he's 3.5k ahead. It's insane. He's just been able to do so much more in this game. He's been so much more involved. Yeah, five, three, and five right now. And yes, he's fallen down, but you can see he's still able to stay ahead by about 30 CS right now, farming quite nicely. Pretty low when it comes to CS numbers outside of the 80 carries. Is Ruler the only one ahead of the clock? We see the problem here as well with Damwon Kia's comp is that even with Baron, they didn't actually get to do anything. And it's not because yeah. Damwon Kia is not oh, good at pushing turrets. Uh, we know that they are. For a fact, I think there are like turret percentage is the most, is the highest and the most insane that we have in the LCK. Um, but that is not enough, right? Like, you actually need to be able to move up, and you can't do that. So Damwon Kia is still fighting an uphill battle here. They need to bait and engage out from Genji, bait Clid and Rascal to go in DB yet again, and then kill Ruler and OBD. And I think the way to bait that is to have vision control, and to have control over the streak that's spawning in 90 seconds is really the best way you can set this up, because similarly to how Damwon Kia had the advantage last game on setup, Gen G have that this time. They have the poke, they have the chip damage. If they can get control, then they can chip these health bars down before the fight happens. Well, we'll see whether they can do that. As we can see, 80 carry items flooding in right now. Ghost is one behind, but that is a six item Tristana at level 17. So range very close to being the maximum with that draw a bead, as well as having just about as much damage 10, as one could and six. possibly like. Yeah, 10-1 uh, and 6 ain't bad, but that 1 is what's sticking out in my mind. If that 1 turns into a 2, we're at 36 minutes, right? We're starting to get to one team fight territory as Bubble connects, but there's a Blast Cone. And uh, of course, Canyon terrified of what could happen as far as a follow-up, but not going to be taken down Dom just yet. Damwon Kia can't trade objectives right now. The timing of this is just a little bit off. Yeah, and it's a little bit awkward. Yeah, this is really unfortunate for them. And normally you'd say, okay, just give it up, it's fine, it's just soul point. But it's Damwon Kia, I, I don't think you wanted this to go Ooh. later, right? <laughs> you want to kind of end it now. You want to find the picks, you want to find the kills. This next team fight might be the final one unless they find a colossal out execution. Yeah, I think it very likely will be, and Damwon Kia need to get into position first. If they actually have to walk into this choke, into all the trouble bubbles, into all the paddle stars, I mean, this is going to be so difficult. Not to mention, you can hard engage as Genji once they stack up. And these choke points working out very well for BDD right now, as Showmaker not going to get engaged on or anything like that. Life looking for it, another. Paddle star goes wide, as well as a spear. There's another one, aimed at the right target, though, as you can see. And Ruler... I think all eyes are going to be on him as it looks like Damwon Kia not going to be able to get to... Oh my god, the damage is just repugnant. As soon as they get on top of it, you just have to give this up as Damwon Kia. Now you can't you can't have buyer's remorse, you know, and try to come in here. <laughs> this is so risky. Like, I think at this point, you just... You have to take the L on this objective. Sorry, maybe look for a fight on the Baron, but you, you, you're not going to be able to trade anything out of this one anymore. Yep, mid lane is in control of Damwon Kia, though. So they have control of the river, and they're pinging madly on this Baron. This is the play. you got to try to fight for this vision control. 
Well, here's the teleport in from Genji. They've recovered some of these health bars. BDD gets himself back as Damonkir just trying to rush it down. It is going to go down quickly as Showmaker's over the side. Finds the stun onto BDD. And now Damonkir, they're looking for the fight instead of the Baron. They're not wanting to flip as now Ruler has to rocket jump early in this fight. Equalizer, very aggressive. No one in range to follow up though. As the Alistair soaks the bubble, that's going to deny any sort of engage. And Dumb One Kia, they're gonna have to go back to the drawing board, can't. I mean, his ultimate's on a low cooldown, but I don't think it's quite low enough here as they're still moving forward. I've seen this before, Headbutt Pulse now, onto the bear as Glitz at half health. He can't go in, and Rascal has to ult to try and get himself out, but I don't think it's gonna quite be enough. Barrel's gonna lock it down with the Ignite. And Dumb One Kia have got rid of one of the frontline on Gen G. And this is such a great position for them to now threaten a Baron fight once again. If, Gen if for Genji, you can't close this gap very easily anymore. You're getting spear chucked at non-stop. Like, how do you actually get in here? You're always under threat. And it's the lack of confidence, I think, that from Genji. Yeah. There was the, the equalizer was gone. The dominance was gone. I think you can go for that fight, but they, they don't want to risk it. They were too scared. They are still good if they can execute on this Baron. They can't get this over, but it looks like they will. I mean, Showmaker you know is so scary right now. Look at that. Move slightly towards Glid, and Glid's like, nope. Nope, 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 get me out of here. And that is the Baron for Damwon Kia. And maybe this is the nameplates. Maybe this is the power of being up against Damwon because I totally agree with you, Chronicler. That was the moment that they're supposed to go in. Another equalizer flies down and you might say, oh, it missed, but no, it creates a perfect opportunity to grab themselves that turret. And now Damwon Kia are starting to extend this lead. The interesting thing is, I don't even think anything is going to change for the next five. Like, I think they're just going to wait out the Baron buff and we're going to get the game decided at the actual soul fight because you still can't siege very well you can't and siege yeah. look at look at the cooldowns here right sure you don't have buster shot but if you go in aggressively here against a team with no dominus and break a will and equalize i think you can do it i think this is just genji getting in their own heads that last engage was over aggressive i think here you have the opportunity but instead they make the call we're going to sack rascal that leads to a baron and i don't think this baron is actually going to get it's, Double it's, anything. It's not going to get them anything, but it's going to set them up for a slight advantage going to the Drake fight, potentially, here. The Baron buff lasts until right when it comes up. And, you know, we talk about mentality. You talk about losing a game, potentially, here, as Gen.G, after being so ahead. It's something Umpty even mentioned, actually, on the analyst desk. You know, he's a pro player. He's been in a lot of these stressful situations. BD getting picked, he said, well, he was nervous. They were scared. Like, this is the kind of thing where you actually have to know your win condition better than Gen.G is, I think, in this situation. They know what they need to do, but they need to actually execute on it. They need to actually be able to make those calls and those hard decisions, because if you mess it up, you lose the game, right? Yeah. Down 0-2. But you have to be strong in these intense moments, and this Drake fight is everything. Like you said, I think this is going to be what decides the game. If either team gets wiped, it's over. Nothing matters. So, I mean, we're 41 minutes into this. Yeah, it is, this is definitely the late, late game. Ruler doesn't have shoes anymore. He took his shoes off and collected himself a green sword. Mercurial Scimitar completed now as well, so we'll be able to mitigate a lot of that uh, CC, because of course Showmaker is exactly his problem, and this may help him. And we talk about the lack of scaling for Dom and Kia. The problem is that the Volibear runs into a similar issue where in the mid game, you can basically be a full on tank and be fine. But this late in the game, you don't have any defensive steroids, you don't have a soul furnace, you don't have ornaments, right? So you can see how squishy he really is despite I building mean, Ghost full is tank. also pretty good at cutting him down. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's, you saw even even Kenyan Spears are oh, doing yeah. considerable amounts of damage. And that's not something you're used to seeing on a full tank laner. And Canyon has a, uh, a slew of pretty terrifying items right now. Speaking of which, B2D collects his cool hat. Yeah, and the, you know, the, the thing about Canyon's uh, Robin Hood's death cap here is like he, he actually puts uh, Ruler down to like about 10% health if he gets caught. And then that's just the end of it. Like he will be executed. And you, you can't actually fight out of the GA. Oh, Clid's in a great position to go for a flank right now. Can't it didn't work out last time. Yeah, true. And uh, he's not going to look for it. As you can see, it feels like some of this confidence has really started to slip for Gen G. As thanks, Jonah Strong, for having a look at that vision. As we've got 17 seconds for this Infernal Soul. Soul point for both teams. This is the pivotal moment. This is it. This is everything. Damwon Kia just going to try to take this vision control. It's difficult for Gen G to actually throw anything into this moment without the vision. Like, they can't throw the Palace Stars. Look at Ruler. Can he get there? Oh, the equalizer. They just walk up the red carpet, but. They can rush to reposition. Genji have given it up. That is going to be the infernal soul. Unbelievable. For Damwon Kia. That equalizer may have just done it. The, what we were talking about, the 0-6 rumble, still able to be pivotal at this stage of the game.
Is Darmon able to get out scot free now with a lot more AP and AD? You've got to be decisive here if you're Genji. You cannot just walk around like this, leave objectives up, and then walk out of the jungle because Damwon Kia are eventually just going to end this game if you give them an opportunity. Now, again, this Inferno Soul isn't one of those things where you go, oh, okay, they got it. They won the game. It's over now. But it feels like Genji have lost the ability to team fight. They're not being aggressive enough. It feels like they're scared of losing this game rather than they're trying to win it at this stage, and that is a big problem. Because you see, every time an opportunity kind of arises, earlier in the game, if this was 10 minutes earlier, they would have gone for it. That one mistake uh, that was made by Clayton and Rascal going into aggressively there, it, in terms of what it meant for the game, it really wasn't that relevant. Like, it was unfortunate, uh, but in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But what it has completely changed is how GNG is playing this game. They yeah. were literally in control from the beginning. The early game was strong. The mid game was strong. They were going for these decisive fights. And we're seeing none of that. And then all of a sudden, if you give Dom Monkey out the space, of course they're going to team fight because they are so good at it. Yeah, and they also understand that this is the time that we need to do so. We'll create exactly the situation where we can do it as we have a look once again Khan just says absolutely not yeah look Genji. at the damage here and you cannot you cannot really turn into this anymore as Genji unfortunately I, I, I think you can I feel like the health bars were really it's a risk I mean, really, the health really bars didn't really low. matter but they had to reposition and then they had to wait for rocket jump cooldown I guess like I, maybe that's what they're thinking but I look I understand. I think that Gen.G, something has got into their heads at this point in time. Something that, you know, if you've been watching the LCK for a long time, it's, uh, it's a Gen.G fan's worst nightmare as another equalizer comes down. Khan will have another one of those in the chamber pretty quickly. I think the death of Clid when he went for that flank has just made him unwilling to do anything like that again. He's not being proactive anymore, and that means that they just don't have great engage anymore. And I feel like we might be on our way to like a 60-minute game here because Dom and <laughs> don't have the engage tools to end this, but if Genji make a mistake, they will win the game. So it's just slow, slow. It's the perfect time to have Umpty on the desk, of course. The man who's <laughs> in the longest game of all time. Uh, he can certainly uh, share some of those thoughts as now. Showmaker saying no, but he's going to get bubbled. Strikebreakers to get himself a little bit further away and will survive for the moment. Damon Kier, though, you can see they're champion at the bit. They want to get in there. And I say champion at the bit. That should be Clid's job. He's riding the horse, but he's just not going for these plays. In a decent position to look for a potential flank as he does spot out Canyon right here. But Canyon will pounce over the wall and Clid look, just decides that, no, this is not the time to go for it. I mean, it is a little bouncing around. Showmaker goes in, looks for Rascal. Bit of chip damage. Now it's Beryl's turn. Gets himself in amongst it. Hasn't actually popped the ult just yet as the bubble connects. Great paddle star there. As this is the go button. Grand entrance is going to land, but Ghost still alive for the moment. Equalizer is good, and they use it defensively. Showmaker going to lock down the Rakan. Both supports going to be traded for, but also the Volley Bear will fall down. Showmaker, does he have enough? He, oh, able to get out of the way with the slice. And Damwon Kia will win the fight two to one. But is it over just yet? Canyon's burning. Primal Surge is running. Ruler! Ruler! Oh my god, dives on forward. But it's not quite enough. Going golden is BDD, but Ghost is going to pop him on the back. Oh, the red buff! Not he's enough. Got, he's got GA here as well, too. But this is going to actually be Ghost having to come back and deal with this. This is actually insane. The game is not over yet by any means. But it's Ruler, by, by himself, he cannot end this. There's no objectives up. Ruler has no life stain. He can't push for the inhibitor. He can't oh, do it. No. He can't do it. And Ghost is just going to get back home. So it's a wash in the end. We're back to the drawing board, ladies happens. and gentlemen. I'm telling you guys, I think this is going to be a really long game because Dom and Kia, when they make decisive moves like this, you can see there's just not a whole lot of follow-up, right? Genji do turn this fight around, and we, it ends up being a crazy fiesta. It's like actually out of control. The back and forth trades. Really good plays from life, by the way, all series long. Especially in this game here, though, on the Rakan, he does go down. But when you trade like this as Dom Wan Kia, you're feeling pretty good about your chances. Now oh, you're starting to feel wow. like you can fight anything. And if you have Vision there as Ruler, this fight is over immediately. Because one, one auto on any of those members and they blow up. Maybe, maybe not the Rumble, but everyone else immediately gone. Then this chase comes through and Ruler, even with his flash being used, he doesn't care. He goes in. Uh, almost dies, but actually makes it work in the very end. Obviously, Ghost at this point in time can 1v1 a Zoe once she's on top of him. Uh, they're not going to give up Baron, right? Uh, uh, it's so, such a uh, fast clear time. Okay, teleport very short from BDD, but will get him into position. Khan has the equalizer. He's going to put it down in this choke point. Life is down to half health as Beryl 
going to get bubbled. That's dangerous, but now the fight is on. Showmaker looking for more. The Rumble's going to pop like a balloon. Darmon Kia secure the Baron, but can they keep themselves alive is the question. They're actually looking for a fight as Canyon bounces on forward. The Zaya already down to the GA, but oh no, Ruler down to his as well. Can he actually respawn and survive? Showmaker is saying absolutely not, but Ruler gets over the wall. Canyon now needs to be respected, and the Zaya is still alive. I and still think Ruler might be out of the 3 here, but still, Damwon Kia win the fight at that instant. And it was insane. The spear from Canyon there just blows up Ruler, gets him into his J early, and if Tristana can't auto, you can't win. I don't know if Ruler can defend it. The Elder Drake is coming up soon as well. The sustain is coming through here. It's a 1v3 hold. Can he do it? I mean, it's up to him. I mean, if anyone could do it, it's him, but I think that it might just be a little bit too late. Yeah, the health bar is not exactly the highest. He has, Ruler no has absolutely so much damage, but these turrets are melting. Buster Shot has to be used, and Ghost just says no. And Darmwon Kia against all odds will win game number two.